Hi students, so before I explain what we're going to do for this lesson, I just want to share something called abstract art. For the next few weeks, we will be looking at this art style, abstract art, and also we'll be trying our hands on something called elements of art, which I'm sure you have come across during the holiday workshop with Miss Angel. Basically, elements of art are like ingredients in making art. Like how you imagine when you're baking a cake, you need flour, eggs, uh, sugar, salt, and etc. When it comes to art, you have these elements to help you make that perfect artwork. And they are this line, shape, form, color, value, space, and texture. I will slowly explain what all these means, but first let's look at some abstract artwork. This is a sample of abstract artwork done by a very famous Russian artist called Vasily Kandinsky. A very tough name to pronounce. He, in this artwork, you can see that he has made use of uh, very simple lines, black lines, and shapes. And it's kind of hard to tell what he's really painting. But you can sort of imagine, like for example, you can see that he's drawing maybe pencils inside a globe. And I see some checkered kind of patterns. And then I see a planet on the left side. Basically, what abstract art means is that the subject matter in abstract art has really little or no relation to real life representation. Meaning the artists do not have any intention to draw what they see. For example, sometimes when we think about drawing art, we'll just draw exactly what we see. Abstract art is the direct opposite of it. They want to make it non-representational, like so that you have that freedom and imagination to, to, to figure out what the artwork mean. This is an, another artwork by Kandinsky. Basically, just it just looks like circles. But for this one, he experimented with creating circles using different hand movements and of course different colors and even he even applied some of the color blending skills. Let's look at this one. This is more chaotic compared to the previous two. You see a lot of usage of color blendings. For example, the colors are blending without making any sense like pink with green and gray, oranges here and there. There's, it doesn't seem like there's any rules that the artist actually followed. You can also see some black lines in the middle. These are called the elements of art. So let's look at another artist. Now this one looks very chaotic, done using the dripping technique. This is done by the artist Joanne Miro. Sometimes when you look at an artwork, some abstract art, they have real meanings behind it. Some artworks, the artists actually hope that we viewers will take part in the meaning making. This is another one by the same artist, Joanne Miro. In this one, he made use of lines, as you can see in the black lines. He made use of shapes, like the circle and the squares and the rectangles. He also made use of flat colors. There's no color blending inside his colors. And last but not least, in his background, you can see that he has used texture, which is one of the elements of art as well. Textures refers to the quality that you feel like you can touch, like the bumps and the roughness of it. In this one, he put thought into composition. What a composition? Basically, it means how you place your things how you place your elements, which is something that you will be practicing for the next few weeks. So let's recap on these elements of art. We will actually only be focusing on the first three, line, shape and form. Next week, we'll go into color, but let's focus today on line, shape and form. Before we get on to what you need to do, Please go and gather these materials first. I need you to go around your house. Try and get as much things listed here as you can. If you don't have one or two, it's okay. But it's very important that you have an art block paper. 
Okay, so to start off, please take out your art block paper. If you don't have art block paper, um, you can use A4 paper or any kind of coloured cards. That will be fine. So like I mentioned just now, we're going to learn to use a few of the elements of art. Lines, shapes and forms. These are some of the first ones that we'll experiment with. So what are lines? Lines are basically just a mark on the surface. Any kind of lines, curvy lines, wavy lines, dash lines. Then lines can transform into shapes when you enclose it together. For example, if I have straight lines and I draw it like this, it becomes a square. I can also make rectangle, triangle, circle. These are called geometric shapes. Geometric shapes are basically mathematical shapes. They have reasons behind their measurements. For example, a square has four equal sides, a rectangle has two equal sides, and another two longer sides. The opposite of geometric is organic shapes. Organic shapes are shapes that you commonly find in nature. For example, my leaves, these are organic shapes. Organic shapes do not have any rules or measurements behind their shapes. It can be just irregular shapes like this or shapes that resemble droplet, droplets. Shapes like mountains. These are organic shapes. So we're going to be using some of these elements to start our abstract artwork. So first, I want you to gather some of the things that you think can make marks on the paper. I have pencils, I have coloured pens, I also have a few of the markers, black markers that look kind of like a, like a, like a brush. Then I have also a white pen, I don't know if I'll use it. I also have some gold markers. I've also prepared some coloured markers. So please go around your house, find what you can use. If you don't have any colours at all, then just use a pencil. I also have crayons. The more choices you have, the better you can experiment with later on. I also have some paint. But we are not doing any colouring yet. We are just going to make marks, focus on lines, shapes and forms. Now I'm going to start with a marker just straight away. Any colours will do. Seriously, abstract, there's no rule, so throw out any notion in your head that makes you want to draw something. Throw all of that out because we're not drawing anything specific today. We're just going to do just basic abstract art that does not resemble anything in this role. I'm going to start with making lines. So you see, I have no idea what I'm doing yet. I'm just simply drawing with my markers. You will also realize that I'm repeating some of the lines just to make the design look more cohesive like they are together because I have some here, I have some there. Maybe I'll have another. You can experiment with different kind of lines. There are so many kind of lines that you can experiment with. Then I'll change it up. I'll use my marker. It's a thick, thick kind of marker. And just continue. Maybe I want to draw a geometric shape now. Maybe I'll draw it over here. Draw a square shape. Then maybe another, maybe I want to draw a circle shape here. So you see both geometric and organic shapes clashing together. When you're doing this, at this stage, you're really just experimenting with where you want to place them. For example, just now, um, my, before I did my square, I wanted to put it here, but I realized that I already have a lot of things going on here. 
before I put it here. Maybe I'll just draw another small tiny circles around. Again, repeating my shape, my element. I also might have some overlapping. Next, I'll try out some crayons. I'll choose a light color because I think my colors are a little bit dark. Maybe I'll just draw lines around it. some orange so I just want you to experiment with the composition just try out what kind of marks you want to make it doesn't have to make sense so now I have shown you how to do lines I've shown you how to do shapes I haven't shown you how to create forms Forms are basically shapes but with added value, like you add shading to it. For example, this. You basically transform a two-dimensional shape into a 3D form. Then by adding shading, pencil shading, it's basically just creating the shadow. You get a form. So we haven't tried creating a form yet. Maybe I wanna use a maybe I wanna use yellow on my circle to create a bit of form. I'll just color the outside. You don't have to follow how I do mine, you, just, you can just do whatever you want. Really just go free. You can also draw like abstract shapes. At this point, maybe your brain is starting to tell you that, oh, this could be a television, or oh, this could be a bubble, or oh, this could be someone's nose. You can also try and tilt it upside down and see what you can come up with. When your brain starts to tell you that these are maybe resembling something, maybe then you can further add on with a more representational drawing. But of course, you still want to keep your drawing abstract. If you're running out of ideas on what kind of lines to create, look around you. You can find inspiration from anywhere. For example, I can get inspired by this uh, container that has some really nice geometric patterns on top. I can also get inspired by my table plant. I can observe how the lines inside uh, moves or I can even follow its contour shape and draw the leaf kind of inspired shapes. So look around, get inspiration from anywhere. You might think that, oh, teacher, this is not art, this is just scribbling. But 
I, I agree, it's kind of like a scribbling at this stage, but it's not done yet, right? Next week, we're going to be applying more colours into it. We're going to be trying out the elements of art colours, textures, and perhaps some value. Okay, at this point, I think I think my abstract art is pretty much done. I don't want to overcrowd it too much until it feels like it's just suffocating you. I still have some empty space in my composition, like over here and here. This will allow your eyes to breathe a little bit. I know it sounds weird. Let your eyes breathe a little bit. That doesn't even make sense. But trust me, if you put too much on a piece of artwork, it will look very crowded like a traffic jam and it does not look nice. That you Sometimes even in visual, you need that space to breathe. But of course, there's the opposite of crowded which is empty. So if you feel like your artwork is still very empty, just go ahead and add more elements. If you think your artwork is done, then good. Just take a picture of your progress. Make sure when you take a picture, it's clear you have good lighting and when you upload it and send it to me i can see what you have done the main important thing is your picture has to be clear okay to upload your progress picture that you have taken just go to schoology under your art course page look at the right hand side there are two assignments click on this one week one abstract art when you go inside you'll see that on the right side there's a button for you to submit assignment. Click on it and this window will pop up. Then just click on that one to attach your photo file. The deadline for submission is before next lesson. Before the lesson ends for today, I want you to also complete a short worksheet. Just go to the course page and click on week 1 quiz. There are 5 questions inside. You should take only around 10 minutes to answer it. I hope you have fun experimenting with the different kind of marks, different kind of lines, different kind of shapes, both geometric and organic, and try to create forms by adding maybe some shading or drawing some 3D shape, 3D forms, sorry. You might want to experiment with paint. I didn't get to do it because I think I already had a lot of options on my table. If you don't have a lot of options, try to keep, try to have a creative mind. What can you do? with just a pencil all right so let's get to work i hope you had fun